So let's begin with prayer. Let's begin with prayer. Amen. Hello. Hello. Let's pray. O oh, most righteous and noble Father, we will give you praise, Lord. We lift you up, God. We honor you. Oh, God, this is a day that you have made, Almighty God. Oh, Jesus, we bless your holy name this morning. God, we are here because of your mercy, because of your grace, Lord. Oh, Jesus. We pray, oh, Father in heaven, oh, God, that as we have gathered, oh, God, despite this fashion, despite, oh, God, in this way, Lord, Father, may our hearts, Lord Jesus, oh, God, and be in tune to you, the true and living God, oh, Oh God, oh God, there's nothing that will hinder us, oh God, at this moment, oh God, from lifting up your name and worshiping you, Lord Jesus. We just need to come, oh Father, with the right spirit, oh God, in sincerity before you, God. I, I honor you, oh God, this morning, Lord. I pray that your hand will be upon each and every one, oh God, who have gathered here, oh God. Father, bless those, oh Father, who support this ministry. God, bless, oh God, those that would offer, oh God, their offering to you, God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that whatever is to be done, oh God, may your blessings flow, may it be done for the honor and glory of your name, Lord. May your Holy Spirit minister to each one of us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to share a screen and I'm going to mute you all. We will begin with a scripture taken from Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> the preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Amen. Let us keep that in mind as we go out throughout this week. That when our works are committed to the Lord, then our thought process will also change. Amen. We want to go into our first song from uh, it's Mansion Over a Hilltop. Today I want to kind of do some songs to encourage us. I know we must be feeling a little bit, a little bit down. In spirit at times, maybe not consistently, but certain days. But here, I just want us to kind of uh, be encouraged and refreshed as we sing these, these songs. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, we'll never more wander but walk on streets that are pure as gold. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old and someday Satisfied 
just one minute. There's a grand place prepared for us that God has in store for you and I. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's a miracle. Jesus is a deliverer. Jesus is a deliverer. Jesus is a deliverer. 
I've been broken in two. He's the God of the sun, the stars, the sea. He is your father. He'll calm the storm. He'll find a way. And he'll fix it for you. We thank you, Almighty Father, that you are the same yesterday, today, oh God, and forever. God, whatever you have done before for us, God, you will do it again. Father, there are many new things that you have yet to do, God. And so, Father, we have our cups upturned, oh God, awaiting, seeking, oh God, depending, leaning, oh Almighty God. Father, we cry out to you this morning, Lord, because we know you're a faithful, everlasting friend. And so, Father, receive our worship this morning and blessed be your name almighty god who lives forevermore father we give you thanks in jesus name amen First of all, welcome one and all. May the Lord richly bless you. It's so so good for you, you to join with us this morning. Uh, it's not perfect the way we are, but it will do. God understands and he knows our situation. He knows where our hearts are this morning. And so he's not one to give us more than we can bear. We just got to continue to look up to him as our Lord, our Savior, as our refuge, as our present help in times of trouble. So I'm, I rejoice that you are with us this morning and that may you be encouraged, refreshed, and be renewed in your mind. There are better days ahead. We just got to endure until God intervenes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to talk to you about a title, New Wine into Old Wineskins. New Wine into Old Wineskins. And I want to read a portion of scripture from Luke chapter 5 from verse 36 to verse 39. And it reads like this. Then he told them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and sews it on an old garment. If he does, the new cloth will tear and the piece from the new won't match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will make the skins burst. The wine will be spilled and the skins will be ruined. Instead, new wine is to be poured into fresh wine skins. 
No one who has been drinking old wine wants new wine because he says the old wine is good enough. Father, may your blessing be added as we listen, Father, and receive what you have for us this day, God. Father, in all this, Lord Jesus, may your words fall on good ground. And Heavenly Father, may we respond, O oh God, as you intended. Amen. Amen. When we, re when we read through this passage, we should ask ourselves this question. Was this really about cloth, wine, or wine skins? Many have used this passage of scripture in debating whether Jesus drank wine or not, but was this really to teach about the making of wine or its consumption? This brings to mind the saying, you cannot see the forest because of the trees. If we are thinking more that Jesus was showing that there was nothing wrong with wine, then we are missing the old picture. Jesus often taught principles and truth by using parables. And in this case, the scripture said he told them a parable. All a parable really is, is looking at everyday situations and using them in an analogies to bring forth a truth to make it more easily understood. In the time of, of, of Jesus and his disciples, bottles were not made of glass and plastic, but they were made of animal skins. And so when they do make wine, they didn't have a uh, a factory of such like now, but they will pour the fresh grape juice into the wineskin and give it time to ferment. Hence, they talk about wineskins. And I imagine they were very precious in those days. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to ruin one of them because it would be costly. Oh, God bless us today. We must look at this in three main settings. There was a pourer, somebody that pours the wine. We got to talk about the wine or the cloth. And we also got to talk about the wine skins. If we look at the person who is going to pour, if we continue in the same context, the person who's going to pour has got to know what he has to pour, whether it is new or old. He's got to figure out what he needs to pour it in, whether what is presented before him is new or old. So if he has new wine, he's got to make sure he has new bottles or new wine skin. If he has old wines, it's okay for old wine skins. I imagine he would not want to pour his new wine or his old wine into new wine skins. That would be a waste. But he want to make sure each match the setting that is best for it. Therefore, the pourer must have some knowledge of the product he has and where he's going to pour it. Amen. Then we look at the wine or the cloth. Is the wine new or is it old? Is the cloth new or is it old? If you're going to be the one that does the, the mending, you got to understand what you're going to work with. In other words, you got to learn if you didn't know. you got to be aware, make yourself... To understand the situation you're in otherwise it would be costly the mistakes that are made and then we look at the wine skins they got to be the right ones for the right product old don't work well with new 
and new don't work well with old. Oh God. So when we think of the poorer, you must know how that wine is going to be aged. If he's going to pour new wine, he knows that this new wine has the capacity to grow. It's going to ferment, therefore it needs room to expand. It's got to be poured somewhere that it would be allowed to expand to its fullest. After all, if, if the receptive if the receptacle, receptacle is not right, then we could have a problem. He must understand whether it has a lot of room to grow or very little. So when he pours it in, he can, be, he can be rest assured that his wine would not be wasted. He has to know how much he has to pour in whether the wine skin is big enough to contain what he's pouring in. Then we look at the wine. If the wine is new, it has a lot of fermenting to do. Therefore, it needs that room. The product itself needs certain environment for it to behave in the fullest extent of what is expected of it. You see, with new wine, it brings uh, a freshness and a newness that gives it uh, a certain need to have more room so it can do its thing. The old wine is already expanded. It's already grown or fermented to where it uh, could go. Therefore, there's not much room for it. When we look at the spiritual side of this, what could Jesus be, be, be teaching his disciples by using this parable? After all, we know According to Ezekiel 37 and verse 14, I'm going to place my spirit in you and all you will live. In Hebrews 8 and 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their heart. I will be their God and they will be my people. If we look at God as the poorer of his spirit or the poorer of good things, God has so much in store that he wants to put in us. He's going to have some things that uh, we are already used to, but he's going to have some things that we have never seen before. God help us, Jesus. And so the poorer will understand the capacity of the vessel to receive. God understands where, uh, where our maturity is in him. After all, the scripture said, he will not give us more than we can bear. For him to be able to do that, he must know our strength spiritually. And he knows everything. Could it be that if we are stuck in our old ways, we are not able to receive new things that God has in store for us? Because God knows we are already stuck in that old way. There's no room for expansion. There is no room for growth. We are used to the a certain things. Therefore, that's all we are able to receive. But God's mercies are new every morning. God's storehouse is never ending. We cannot contain how much God has for you and I. He could not give it all to us at once. But being a master and in understanding the receptacle that is before him, he's going to put in 
exactly what that receptacle, receptacle, you know what I'm trying to say. What that vessel is, is uh, able to receive, he's going to put that much because God don't want to destroy you. Therefore, he will not give you more than you can contain or bear. So then we have a problem. I don't know about you, but the scripture said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Hunger is not a one-time thing. I would like to know that God is pouring into me daily. I would like to know that God has not reached the, the max of what he's going to put in me. That he, has, he still has something in store for me. And he, he sees that I'm able to contain it. And he wants to put it in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so for me, my hunger, you know, I believe that there's a song that says, as the deer panted after water, so my soul seeks after thee. As children of God, we yearn, we hunger for the master. We are not contented with just what we have already received because he encourages us to seek after him. Seek. He said, and he shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So the poor has got the stuff that is good for us. He's got his spirit, he's got his blessing, he's got his calling, he's got his instructions he wants to pour into us. Now when we look at the, at the vessel. If we are if we are already old, in other words, we are we are, we are already uh, stretched to the max. We are not able uh, or willing to receive anything else. We become rigid and stiff. We are not flexible anymore. We are not able to receive new things. We keep looking back. That's not the way it used to be. I've never seen it done like that before. Therefore, I'm not going to receive that because that could not be from God. We are only encouraged that all good things come from God. We are also taught that he would not give you anything that is not good. He would not withhold any good thing from you. He wants you to hunger and to seek. But if we are already set in our way, what kind of forming what kind of stretching can you do there are some things going to happen in our lives that will cause us to stretch to accommodate it if we are not going to stretch we might break and according to the parable the vessel will be lost so there is a a challenge do we close our minds to all new things such that we are not destroyed and stay in our rigid, already, already formed way? Or do we yield ourselves to the spirit of Almighty God that we become pliable and viable in his hands such that he would see that there is capacity for us to receive these new things and pour it into us? New wine into old bottle. Jesus said no one does that. He was speaking of people on earth. If men on earth knows this, imagine God was able to see us as vessels. He would also understand this. I don't want to fall short of anything that God has in store for me. I don't want you to fall short of anything God has in store for you. Therefore, we must be in a position to receive what God has for us. In Romans 12 and verse 1, I therefore urge you, brothers, 
in view of God's mercies to offer your bodies as living sacrifices that are holy and pleasing to God. For this is the reasonable way for you to worship. Offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable before God. We could replace that by saying, offer ourselves as vessels that are holy and acceptable before God. So that he has the master pourer. He has the, the God of our lives. He can see us as vessels ready to receive. Not old wine skins that are already formed and shaped in our bad habits, in our bad ways, in our bad tendencies, in our bad choices, in our bad lifestyle. But we are in a position where we are seeking God daily, bearing our cross daily, asking God to form and to shape us into whom he wants us to be, that new creature, those lively stones that will build up his spiritual house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 2 in Romans 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world. Some of us, the things of this world have already caused us to stretch and be shapen in a certain way. And now nothing else seems to move us. Nothing else seems to shake us. Nothing else appeals to us. We are already set in our own way. Oftentimes I heard people say, this is the way I am and I'm never going to change. That might be good in certain circumstances, but spiritually, you got to be ready to yield to the spirit of Almighty God. Do not be conformed to this world. In other words, don't be shaped, don't be formed according to how the world thinks, according to how the world behaves. But continuously be transformed by the renewing of your minds. So that you may be able to determine what God's will is, what is proper, pleasing, and perfect. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We got to change the way we think. We got to open our minds such that the word of God, when it goes forth, we are able to comply to it, not resistive of it. But receiving of it, re receptive to what God's new instructions are for us. God is not going to tell you to give up your salvation. What he's going to do is bring you into a greater maturity towards perfection and the instrument or the vessel that he can use. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up and make me whole. The songwriter says, so for you and I this morning, I want to encourage you to digest this. New wine cannot go into old bottles. When God wants to do a new thing, we need to have a transformation of the vessel that is going to receive it. Otherwise, we are flogging a dead horse. We try to pour it in. It's either not going to get in or it's going to destroy the vessel. But a vessel that desires to receive will go on the transformation such that they can receive. How can we be transformed? And I'm speaking spiritually here. How can we be transformed? By allowing the Spirit of God to renew our minds. By allowing Him to stretch us. By allowing Him to shape us such that we are in a position to receive what God has in store for you and I. It is not healthy spiritually for a child of God to be stuck at one stage. If you cannot feel yourself growing, 
there is a challenge in your life. If you cannot feel yourself have moved from point A to point B, there are challenges in your life. I cannot tell you what it is, but you need to seek to find out what it is. Because an immature tree will not bear fruit. Any, any immature, whether animal, human, if the body is not developed, you cannot bring forth a child. If the tree is not reached a certain stage, there will be no fruit on it. If we as children of God are not maturing or growing, we cannot receive the good things that God has for us. In one stage, Paul was even chiding his congregation in saying, when, when you need to be having harder stuff to eat, I still have to feed you with milk. In other words, you are not maturing. For us to receive new things, for the Spirit of God to bring new things to us daily, we have got to be able to grow as new wineskins. Otherwise, this new thing, we cannot stand it, we cannot understand it, and it will destroy us. So be encouraged today with these few words of mine. If we want to receive newness from God, we have to be able and ready to change. We got to be ready to adapt. Many times as soon as we use the word change and adapt, we, we tend to jump to the point, no, 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 I'm not going to change my belief in God. That's not what change I'm talking about. The change I'm talking about, there are higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord. When you're called out from sin, your new life in Christ is just beginning. There's more that he has called us to. He's called us to be fruitful. He's called us to multiply. He's called us to be witnesses. He's called us to be disciples. He's called us to be an example to the world. He's called us to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. There's more that he has in store for you and I. So my brothers and sisters, Please yield yourself to the word of God. Many times we hear it and we don't learn how to apply it. We can apply it to others, but when it comes on to ourselves, we fall short. Let us apply this word to our lives. That if there is anything that would hinder us from being accommodating to the Spirit of God, to any new thing that God will bring to us, to any new inspiration that God will fill our minds with, then we want to be conformed such that He can use us as His vessel. Please bow your heads with me. O Heavenly Father, most righteous, most glorious King, I thank you, God, that when you walk this earth, Almighty Father, when your son was here, he taught this principle. New cloth doesn't go on old because they don't work well together. New wine doesn't go in old wine skins. Father, I believe your truth this morning to be that we, you cannot pour your new thing into us if we are stuck in our old ways. Almighty God, I pray in the name of Jesus this morning that, Father, you would minister to each and every heart, that, God, you will, oh, God, let your Holy Spirit do a, a change in us, Lord, a transformation in us, Lord, Almighty God. 
that your consecrated power that will draw us, oh God, out of our stubborn, obstinate ways, Lord, where we are set in our, in, in our own thinking, in our own ideas, Lord. And Heavenly Father, conform us to you. Mold us into those new creatures, God, that you have called us to be, our Almighty God. And Father, those of us who are yet to know you, oh God, this morning, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that they, they start to understand that there is a new thing, oh God, that you have brought to mankind, a salvation, a hope, oh God, that this world has never known, Lord, that Father in heaven, that their lives have yet to begin until they have met you, oh God, the Savior of this world. And so, Father, this, this hour, we pray, oh God, that you will touch each heart, Lord, that man and woman will turn from sinful ways, that will turn from ways of darkness, God, oh God, and yield themselves, oh God, to the Savior of this world, the, the, the master of the sea, the, the one, oh God, who forgives and washes away sins, that their lives may be begin anew in you. And Father in heaven, that your kingdom increase, Lord, and that your children endure to the end, and may your name be glorified. We lift you up, Lord, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have one more song. I want to do. And remember, at the end, we, have, we can unmute. We will unmute. And you guys can visit for a little bit or as much as you want. Right, say hi to each other. You know, your faces make a difference to me, so I like to see your smiling, your smiling faces. I miss you. But this is the medium that we can use at this time. So may the Lord richly, richly bless you. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. When we are that vessel that can receive what God has in store for us, our answers will be yes.
Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Lord, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless Jesus. You cannot mute. Oh, yes. Hello. Your will is your will. Amen. Amen. Just a comment. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Russell. How are you, my sister? I am good. And you? I can't complain. Thank the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> Oh man. Good morning, Brother Vassal. Brother Vassal? Mr. <laughs> Blocky, <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Brother Vassal. How are you? I am doing well, my sister. That's good to hear, and how is the family living? All is well so far. Thank God for that. Hi, Sister Angela. Good morning. Yes, it's a blessed day for sure. Yes, it is. Praise God. <laughs> Julie, that's why the Bible said that we're able to give thanks with a grateful heart. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Today. Yes, morning, Brother Vassal. Hi. So we should all give it to family. Pretty good thing. How is your family? My family is doing good. And Patsy? She's good, she's good. She's good. Alright, alright. I haven't seen her since last year, so I'm good. <laughs> 